So in the aftermath of uh, the Philadelphia 76ers, it collapsed from game six going into game seven, where game seven, it we saw exactly what all you needed to see. Change needs to happen. Um, I'm gonna start with, uh, I'm gonna start with Joel Embiid because he the, he was the focus. He was the MVP. He was the he was supposed to be the engine for that team. They gave him someone who was supposed to be able to complement him well. Um, truth be told, from what I saw, there was a couple of things. One, as a seven foot seven foot seven foot one. 260 pound force of nature, 280 pound, however how, how much he weighs. As a force of nature, you should not be on the perimeter as much as he is. Yes, he can hit jump shots, fine, It's okay. It's that's fine. But when you are down in games, you don't need to be out there trying to catch the ball and face up or trying to dribble your way to the basket. When you're, when you're, um, when you're down, when you're down, you're doing the defense a favor. He's seven seven foot tall. He should be under the rim. He's got he's got incredible footwork. He can if he throws up a jump hook, I think he can make it about three four times in a row if he wanted to. But he don't got to because he's that big. He's that much of a force of a nature where he can get any possible point he wants under the rim. So with that being said, you have Al Horford who is six foot nine on you. You've had Grant Williams, Marcus Smart. They're putting them on Joel Embiid because he's not under the rim. If he's under the rim, it's a dunk or a foul. He ain't even got to take a dribble. Get in the low post, demand the ball, and if you and if they're doubling you down there, that's when someone's going should be open to hit a shot. Now, for the last two games of the series, game six and seven, Philly could not hit a shot. They couldn't throw a rock in the ocean. It was bad, absolutely terrible. But Embiid did not help because he's out there facing up, throwing up shots right along with them. So there's that. Also, Jason Tatum feasted on Joel Embiid in game seven. Why? Because they went away from the philosophy that was working. They were they zoned Jason Tatum for most of the series, just kept Embiid um, in the position to come over and help every time Jason Tatum tried to drive. And they in for the most part of the series, it worked because in, in like in the first half, he was having his worst games possible. But then in the second half, he would he would um figure it out and then and then he would carve the defenses up. So what I'm trying to figure out is, you kept the game close in the first half. Once Jason Tatum started knocking down, he hit a bunch of threes in the second half in game seven. Why was it still Joel Embiid's switch on him? I think he had about 25 points on Embiid. Where, where's, where was the zone? The zone would have cut all of Embiid being on Tatum out and Tatum seeing he's Embiid's a center. People were people were really saying sitting there saying, "Oh, the MVP, he he's supposed to stop him." What center is actually going to stop a wing player that's top three at his position? Three, four. There's a lot of it's a lot of guys at his position that are great. Top three, four at his position. What center is stopping that? None of them. Absolutely none of them. You might get a stop maybe in every now and again, but when he's rolling like he was and you're switching and beat on him, you're done. You've done yourself no favors. Your defense is getting annihilated. And it's just that goes into, into coaching in which I think Doc Rivers needs to go because he's not the man for the job. But I'm going to let me um what else I'm going to um, beat. Um, Trying to think, was there any other pieces left on that? Um, those are my takeaways from, from from Embiid himself. In the press conference, honestly, I had absolutely no issues with what he said in its entirety. Everyone cut it out to say, me and James can't win alone. Yes, they did have two of the, they were the worst on the team. When, not, not, not the worst, but they played bad, horrible, in fact. 
But what Embiid said was that everybody needs to uh, get better, and including himself. He said himself first. That is, he called himself out. So there's really nothing wrong with saying that. It's just, um, I guess people don't want to hear it because he had a bad game, and Tobias Harris and Tyrese Maxey were the leading scorers, but usually that's not the case. So he's basically saying he wants his team to be elevated into there's always about three, two, three guys that are leading the charge. And usually it's only two with Philly for some reason, one way or another. Doc Rivers. I think y'all know how I feel about him. He got to go. He has been hand, he's been handed time and time again, star after star after star or duos or trios. And it's not working. T-Mac didn't work. Couldn't get out the first round. Rondo, Pearson, Allen, you got one chip. One chip. That is it. You got one chip. Got to the finals and then lost to Kobe after you, after you did win. Because I believe uh, it was Kendrick Perkins or Garnett. And one of them two got injured. And then couldn't get back because Miami formed the Heatles. Fine. Lob City. They lost to James Harden and them, where in game six, James Harden was out, was benched because they were down 20. They came back with Jason Terry and Josh Smith, a, a, that a led second unit by that. And then in game seven, let James Harden torch them. That was probably their best shot, and it was over from there. The Clippers of... Uh, I don't know how he managed to keep the job for that long as the clip for the Clippers or be the team president, but he had it for a very long time up to where they got Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. And in the bubble, they blew a 3-1 lead to Denver. Very young Denver team, I might add. A young Denver roster that blew a 3-1 lead. And it's I, th I think it's just absolutely impossible to find a way to blow a 3-1 lead with Kawhi Leonard healthy. And then you had Paul George. Now, George, he had a... That series was bad for him. I think that series was bad. He was throwing up shots off the side of the board, but you had Kawhi Leonard. There's no way you should be having a Kawhi Leonard on your team. Because the way that man can take over a game is very Kobe Bryant-ish. Kobe Bryant is, I, I think Kawhi Leonard might be more in control than Kobe Bryant is when he's on the floor. Ka Kawhi Leonard's on the floor. He can control a game so well on the offensive end. And on defense, he's no he's no slouch on the def defensive end as well. So that's why I, I can see, I see a lot of Kobe Bryant in what Kawhi Leonard does in the mid-range area and on defense. So I don't, it, it baffles me to see that how you blew a 3-1 lead with that man on your roster. And then you had Paul George behind him. Going next, Embiid, Ben Simmons, Tobias Harris. Whatever happened with Ben Simmons, it's whatever happened with Ben Simmons. He had the, a dunk under the rim in game seven, and he didn't take it. But uh, it is what it is. He got off the hook with that because Ben should have taken the dunk. He got off the hook with that. But the following, the next year, you were up. 20 points to the Toronto Raptors. You had the series one. Get your starters out the game. He left him beat in and he got his face elbowed and crushed his um, crushed something in his face. So and he also had a concussion. So Embiid was out for the first two games of the Miami series. Unacceptable. Leaving your players in that's a blunder. As long as he's been coaching, it's been 20 years. It's been 20 years of coaching. And there's no possible way you forget to take your starters out when you're up 20 in a closeout game. Because something like that would happen. So then he's left with James Harden versus the Miami Heat. Moving on to this year. I get the James Harden next. I'm very disappointed in James Harden. But moving to this year, 
once they lost in game six in a game where Jason Tatum wanted to lose that game in the first three quarters. Jason Tatum gave that game away. Gave him away. They gave he gave the game to them. And they lost and they just they handed it back and said, Here you go, Tatum. You deserved it. Go to the next round. So when I seen them do that, I knew in my head, this series is over. All the strippers in the world can't save James Harden. All the motivation, no speeches to Embiid, he or he gives back to the team, ain't gonna help him. You blew it in game six at home. So now you're going back to, to Boston's house and Jason Tatum lit him up for 50. The Doc Rivers, that you, you're going to be one of the ones to go. This is probably going to be another, a lot of other people to go because this is nothing but a complete failure. Sixers should have been in the next round. Probably be in the NBA Finals. Now, I'm going to do a second part to James Harden. I'm say a second part of, of the video. It's going to be a second video for James Harden because it's a lot that needs to be unpacked there. So stay tuned.